on cornerofthegalaxy.com. Welcome to Corner of the Galaxy, the show that talks 100% LA Galaxy soccer. We're glad you could join us. Now it's time to sit back and relax as your hosts navigate through the twisting, turning, but never boring world of the five-time MLS Cup champion, LA Galaxy. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Corner of the Galaxy on cornerofthegalaxy.com. I'm your host, Josh Gessman, coming to you on a Thursday, March 21st. LA Galaxy getting ready to take on the undefeated Sporting Kansas City at SKC this weekend. The LA Galaxy also undefeated. They have a streak going on with Dayan Jovalich. How unprecedented is that streak? Pretty, and we're going to talk about that. Uh, let's see. Ventura County FC, former LA Galaxy 2, currently playing a U.S. Open Cup game. Are we watching it? We're paying attention. We're just watching on the periphery. We're going to talk about that a little bit as well. And then we're going to get you all the way leading up to this game against Sporting Kansas City. So a lot of stuff to get to, a lot of things to talk about in order to help us do that. We're glad to have him back. Eric, the Portuguese Hammer Vieira. How you doing, bud? VC. FC. Right. VC. Right. That's right. Are it, we starting chants? Or is, we got we to get in with the, you know, the Vin, Ventura County Football Club. I would have preferred soccer club, but, you know, we'll allow it. <sighs> You, <laughs> deep just, side, deep side. It's like it's like you just watched the U.S. Men's National Team and you're just in a state of three one. Three, uh, I don't I don't know why I don't know why it was always in the bag. It was yeah. always in the bag. It was an easy game. Three one. Um, Berhalter masterclass. That, I don't know what people. I, I, if you hate Greg Berhalter, it must just annoy the crap oh, out of you that he keeps winning games. Yeah, it was a great a great evening for Berhalter and Haji Wright haters <laughs> alike. So I'm having a rough night, but happy they won. It's it's one of those weird things. Oh, uh, it's, it's a weird one. I mean, that whole even the Nations League and all that stuff is weird. Just in the timing of it, it feels weird when it picks up and when it drops off. And it's just like, oh, semifinals. OK, cool. You know, that type of thing. And then now you have U.S. Open Cup and the first round is being played. You have L.A. Galaxy 2, which is now Ventura County FC, FC. not Ventura, mm-hmm. Ventura County Fusion. Because if you type in Ventura County FC, like the fusion thing will pop up. So don't be yeah. confused about the Ventura County Fusion. Uh, different team. They're currently playing what we believe is Irvine Zeta's two, right? Two. That's yeah. There's think... Irvine Zeta and right. there's Irvine Zeta two. Not to be confused with Ventura County FC, which is formerly LA Galaxy two. There's wheels within wheels. A lot of a lot of open cups spinning and spinning. So yeah, I, I still couldn't get to the bottom of it because. I know Irvine Zeta played yesterday, mm-hmm. so this isn't Irvine Zeta proper. This is Irvine Zeta two. So how do they have two teams? But the you know MLS has one team. It's just <laughs> it's 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 domestic cup greatness is what we're <laughs> witnessing. Well, yeah. uh, the other part of it is one of the Irvine Zeta teams was involved in like a four minute brawl with another team that was called caught on tape and of course put on the news at Orange County Great Park. And so I'm wondering if it was this team or that team, and I have no idea and I can't tell you. Uh, but that game currently won one in about the 30th minute. Uh, I believe the uh, the LA Galaxy goal. We'll just we'll just sort of hinted at it that way. The LA yeah. Galaxy goal there was scored on an own goal. So uh, the the Galaxy have failed to put the ball in the back of the net by themselves so far. But still a draw one one right now as it stands, and them trying to get into uh, this this second round of the U.S. Open Cup. If you're a Cup favorite, I'll be honest. I mean, you and I were talking about it a little bit beforehand, but I'll be honest, it's actually pretty easy to watch games. We've been finding games. You can watch yeah. them. You can see them. You can do the whole thing, uh, that type of thing. Did you see uh, former LA Galaxy player Sasha Kleshin out there playing? Yeah, I, I love that. The Des Moines Menace. I, I sent out a tweet yesterday. I have to apologize to the Des Moines Menace. I was not familiar with their game. Right. The, 
what a logo. Incredible logo, incredible little mascot. Not only was Sasha Kleston coming out of retirement, Brian Rowe. Brian Rowe, goal. yep. So, you, you know, you had some LA Galaxy connections. That's that's what it's all about. You know, is you hear a lot about, um, you know, uh, retired players playing in your Sunday leagues or your local leagues. It's one of those things if you're in kind of the Sunday league circuit or playing some of those, uh, you know, leagues – uh, around you kind of can't you catch some of these players drop by it's it's not an uncommon thing so i i believe the game was being played uh in southern california so i think that p- could have been the reason why you may have seen guys like brian rowe and sasha Kluschen added to the roster so we'll see uh if he continues on the, his cup run played extra time scored a penalty right i mean w- he's just an, uh, an inspiration an inspiration to us all i really i really <laughs> loved watching it you know th- all the scenes behind it. So it was pretty cool. That's, that's what the open cup is all about. And that's why you saw so many people upset about MLS's, you know, removal of a lot of their teams participating, because that's what it's all about is these teams. You mentioned the one team that got into a brawl. You have Sasha question coming out of retirement. These are all kind of the, the little rough underbelly that makes, you know, that makes soccer fun. That it makes you have the romanticism and kind of the, the love of the game of the possibility that this team, from Des Moines, Iowa, could be you know up against it in a final in a you know Concacaf Champions Cup spot. That's that's exciting, and so I I, I totally get the appeal of it. Uh, <laughs> but it's just crazy. The other thing about the game, if you, if you weren't keeping up with Sasha Kleshin coming out of retirement and playing for the Des Moines Menace, is the game was delayed because there was a high school lacrosse game Correct. that hadn't finished right. <laughs> prior to the scheduled kickoff time. So again. Just another magic of the cup. Yeah, he got, like you said, a uh, penalty kick converted, uh, 120 minutes played. Um, he also had an assist uh, in, in the game as well. So all that stuff adds up to Bradley, Bradley Wright Phillips sending him a, a a walker on Twitter and saying, you're going <laughs> to need this. And he goes, after 120 minutes, I think I will, uh, yeah. 100%. So uh, some sore bones there. We want to talk about another former LA Galaxy player. Uh, I did have a little interaction with Mr. Sean Franklin today. It was his birthday. Uh, that was not birthday, why I was... Sean. Yeah, exactly. Happy birthday. But that was not why we were talking. I was actually... Uh, inquiring about something else, but uh, it was always good to to hear him and and or to to text him and hear back from him and stuff like that. Just just the absolute one of the best guys um, from and oh, by the way, such an amazing great soccer player too. Um, oh, yeah. Sean was so good for the for the LA Galaxy. So I uh, got to check in with him. So happy birthday, Sean! Appreciate it, and uh, we'll try to get Sean on the show sometime in the in the near future and see if we can make that happen. So um, I will shout out if you're a newer LA Galaxy fan. Search Sean Franklin Golasso. Oh, do we? He, had, he has he has an all timer, an all timer hit. Uh, you know, the, the just it's in the it's in the archives, and so you know, the, go ahead and, and Google it and check it out. It'll be worth your while. It's like just a one, it's like one a of the great goals. Sprint. It's like a ball yeah. that comes out on a corner and rolls out oh, to the defender who's waiting and spanks and it. Yeah. He's like full run with the ball on the ground and like full through hit on not a volley, but because the ball's rolling. But you know how like yeah. whenever you play kickball and the ball's rolling like just perfectly, <laughs> and you're like, oh man, I'm gonna kill this. Oh, I'm gonna crush it. Let's go on our first tangent. What was your preferred pitch that you'd call out? I would like a little bounce. You know, okay, you and, like a little bounce. Well, I'm gonna place it. I mean, let's be very okay. clear. Trying to hit a home run in in kickball is is selfish and and self serving. <laughs> I'll, I'll be very clear. Just you know, you want the doubles. You want to you want to find yeah. find little gaps and find little holes. And you know, hey, you were probably Money gifted ball. as a, as a soccer player, and so was you know, I knew how to kick the ball. So you give me just a little bit of bounce, I'm gonna be able to take that and put it anywhere I want it, and it's gonna be a nice little double. Drop it in there, get them RBIs in, rock and roll, keep going. What about Smart. you? I, you know what? I, I started with the bounce at first because you got a little lift. But as I got older and a little wiser, I went with throw me the fastball. Give okay. it, to, you know, get, throw me the high heat down the middle, and that way I could just crank it and kick it as hard as I can. So that that to me was my my move. I preferred the the fast roll. I forget what it was. Slow rollies, right. was bouncer, like you used to call. I forget what the fast one was called. But. I said, my 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 problem with the the roller is that on most of the fields we played on, it wasn't flat. So you it was going to bump anyway. It was going to bump yeah. anyway. And so then you didn't know. So I would rather know it was Fair. bouncing, right? So okay. you didn't want to. Otherwise, you'd end up on your butt, you know, swinging and missing on, you know, you should be you should be kicked out of, out of kickball forever if you swing and miss. Uh, Tim gives us a $5 super chat. Happy birthday, Vic, says he's a huge fan. So happy birthday, Vic. We appreciate it. Happy birthday, Vic. We appreciate you, Tim. We appreciate you, Vic. Happy birthday. Yep, absolutely. Great. Um, so anyway, so you have a little U.S. Open Cup magic. That was uh, that was something that's going on and continues to go on. And we'll sort of check in and I'll let the, uh, the chat room. Uh, sort of update us on the score while we're going here because uh, I think as I mentioned before I'm I'm single parenting it right now uh, my wife is is out in a way uh, 
uh, for a conference. And so uh, I have my son who I'm watching, who I'm guaranteeing will be in this room in at least 15, 20 minutes. Like there's a zero it. chance he won't be in this room. So um, well, just, I'm just keeping an eye on him, making sure he doesn't kill himself while he's playing in this room. So <laughs> that's, uh, that's our one goal, right? Keep him alive. That's it. That's it. I just keep, keep you know, mom happy. Mom there, will be happy if that's the case. There's the, he can have bruises. You can have yeah. band-aids. Like you can do a lot of things, right? But he needs to be alive. I think yeah. it's the, is the big one. So we'll keep our eye on, uh, on the little <laughs> munchkin while he's over there. So, uh, that's going on. The other thing that was happening today was they w- did have the pre-sale going on for League's Cup. So if you were interested in League's Cup, if you're interested in going to these games, and listen, MLS has thrown a ton of money behind League's Cup. Uh, It's, you know, their bread and butter, this in-season tournament, which is stupid, even though the NBA is starting to do it too. It's stupid. Um, I understand why they're doing it because they're just love the money so much. They're just, they, they, you know, let it roll. And really, they want to make this tournament sort of the idea around the world, which is you're taking the two biggest properties in North America and basically in CONCACAF and you're saying, hey, you guys play against each other and this will people will watch this because it's the two biggest, um, which isn't a wrong thing. Um, it's just, again, it's in the middle of the season and it's just, yeah. it just, that's the part that, that sort of takes me away. The, <laughs> the, the other part about it is that literally when you look at League's Cup and, and the scheduling and everything that's going on, there's not that many games after League's Cup. So really League's Cup is not happening in the middle of the year. League's yeah. Cup is happening towards the end of the year this year, which is weird because the front of the schedule is so loaded with games. So the League's Cup break is going to be a significant turning point for a lot of teams, I think. Um, you're going to already have your summer talent in. You're going to be waiting. You're going to get into the League's Cup. And really, League's Cup may be training for the last like eight, ten games of the season. And that's it. Um, because you should be very well on your way to uh, to the playoffs whenever you're done with League's Cup and it starts to come in. So um, yeah. are, are you are, does it does it do anything? It's, Would you rather it's, watch it's, U.S. Open Cup and Sasha Kleshton than, it, than League's it, Cup? That's my whole issue with the whole premise to begin with. Is that right now? Again, rule the reminder that Twitter slash X is not a real place. Correct. The, the the you have to pick a side. You're either pro MLS Cup or pro League League's Cup. You're either pro MLS or you're pro not non uh you know non MLS basically. And so I don't I don't like that there's two camps because I was mentioning earlier a lot of people who are LA Galaxy fans. That's their local team. That's the team they support. They believe in kind of my mission statement of supporting local soccer. That's why they support the Galaxy. And so it's not a mutual exclusive thing well if i support mls club then that means i don't support the lower leagues or the lower level clubs either so it's not an either or thing for me and so that's kind of the annoying thing for me because there are people who dislike major league soccer which in some cases rightfully so there's tons of flaws and there's tons of things to pick at and the pro rel crowd that goes along with it as well there's a whole kind of undertone of i just don't like whatever mls is going to put out whether it's an mls team or the league in general the things that they're doing and so you have people just you know basically taking a crap all over it to take a crap all over it but when you look at league's cup is it a cash grab 100 percent. but you could say that about any <laughs> any tournament uh, you know you look think of the the summer uh, the summer tournament showcases where the clubs come out and that's a cash grab you can say that you know some of the club world cup that's could can be considered a, a cash grab in terms of where it's held and, and certain the time of year that it takes place. Why does it have to take place in the middle of the season and this and that you can make arguments about all of it. So, you know, everything is a cash grab to an extent. Look at the FIFA world cup right now, the expansion of teams and uh, the number over three different countries, allowing more countries in that that can be called a cash grab as well. That doesn't make the world cup less prestigious. That doesn't make the club world cup less prestigious. And so that's, that's kind of my rub is I, I'm not an uh, one. I, the awkward thing is I don't want to fully come out and say I'm a pro leagues cup guy that it needs to be all leagues cup, you know, God bless Don Garber for, for bring, putting this at our feet. I think the timing of it is weird. Stopping the league is weird. There's, I think there's a way you can do this and make it work differently and still have it be a success. But when you look on the face of it, the LA Galaxy versus Chivas de Guadalajara is much more of an appealing match than the Des Moines Menace versus Irvine Zeta 2. It, it just is. So the fact that you're there setting up these dream matches and it's going to be something that is going to draw fans in and draw the amount of, you know, Liga MX fans that there are in the United States and especially in Southern California, they want to see their teams. There's so much support here. So make it available. That's there's a reason why the Mexican national team plays a lot of their home games on U.S. soil. So there's a re- there's an appeal to have those teams play here and then to for the the brand wise 
having MLS in the same conversation with those Liga MX teams and having them face off. It's 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 no different than a Champions League to me. Is you take there's the, the two top leagues in North America. Let's what would happen if you put them face to face? That's interesting. So it doesn't have to be you throw the baby out with the bathwater and say I don't like the format. I don't like the way they do it. So it's a completely useless cash grab. Let's throw it away. It can be interesting. I you know we I think there's a lot of people who'd be lying to themselves if they. You know, they rolled their eyes when League's Cup was announced and the format changed last year. But when Messi was going on that League's Cup run, right. all the eyes were on it. Yep. Everyone was watching it. Whether you loved it or you hated it, everyone was watching it because it was interesting. So I think it is something that's interesting. It is something that has appeal to it. But that doesn't mean that <laughs> I don't want to watch Open Cup and I don't want to see the exciting matchups and the games on a lacrosse field. I'm interested in that, too. But I'm also interested in watching the Galaxy versus Chivas to Guadalajara and seeing who's going to advance, seeing teams like Pumas and, and Tigres and all, you know, how do they stack up against some of the top MLS competition? That's interesting. I want to see those matchups also. And I think I think that's a fair thing to say without being a MLS shill or MLS homer. It's a, it, I like good soccer. I want to see good soccer. Yeah, I, and I don't disagree with that. And, and so for me, really, you look at the CONCACAF Champions Cup and that's for yeah. me, still that feels like a real tournament. That feels that's, like something that... That's a level above this. Correct? Right. That's the that's the benchmark. But but it feels like MLS is hiding that, right? It feels like they're they're almost like, oh, don't you can play... I mean, they were not even telling you where you could watch games for CONCACAF Champions Cup, right? And it's sort of like... Which is weird. This is, this is supposed to be the Champions League for, you know, CONCACAF, right? This is what you want to watch. This should be all the best teams competing in these tournaments, trying to get something. You know, League's Cup is very much a made-up thing, right? And so for me, it's like, yeah, I'm good. I understand why you're doing it. It's money grab. You're going after it. Cool. I'm all about money grabs, too. you got to make money in order to be able to do all the things that you want to do. And hopefully that money goes back into MLS and to players and to salaries and all the things. And it helps the league grow. And uh, hopefully you're seeing, a, you know, through CONCACAF Champions Cup, through, um, you know, through League's Cup, you're seeing MLS on a more even footing with teams from Mexico, right? And so you want to see that growing and, and you know, sort of being that ultimate, which is the ultimate league in, you know, in CONCACAF. Is it going to be, you know, Liga MX or is it going to be, um, you know, uh, a Major League Soccer? And, and right now it's the teams from Mexico that still have the advantage. They still, yeah. I still on, in a lot of ways, spend more money. Um, but not always, right? And so we're starting to see that it's starting to get a little more equal. So uh, for me, love the U.S. Open Cup. I love the wackiness of it and everything else that's going on. Um, you know, I, I like CONCACAF Champions Cup because that's a real tournament and it really comes yeah. in. League's Cup is hit or miss for me, and I will watch it again this year and see if I can get excited about it and and, and pay attention and follow it. So um, a, a really interesting one to sort of watch. Uh, you know, I we, we talked about this before, but I don't love the fact that, you know, you don't have MLS teams in USL anymore. I don't love the fact that you're in this MLS next pro which is division three yeah. and you can see like just the quality of soccer is not there anymore it and it's off. like yeah it dropped off and you know dennis de Closa, whenever he would he came on the show multiple times was talking about how when you play in usl championship you're playing against this is professional soccer this is Bro men man. against yeah. men right you know the whole deal and that that's an important step for everybody um so i'm wondering how the development happens i know the development hasn't changed with ventura county fc in terms of the pathway it's really just a name change more than anything um and then the ability to sort of uh, to to get sponsorships and sort of do their own thing and establish their own identity in order to help offset the giant red number that's always next to la galaxy too right that's the idea yeah. is make this more palatable because mls teams don't just want to keep dropping dropping cash um so yeah, yeah. um but the, the, the double-edged sword on that is that it is still the an la galaxy 2 academy team whatever you want to however you want to define it. So you are still getting the young talent, younger players who skew younger. And so when you're in the MLN, MLS Next Pro League, you're playing against players of the same age. And so to Dennis, the closest point, something that I always remember, I've had the opportunity to speak with Eddie Lewis, you know, Southern California native, you know, played overseas, played Tok in the Premier League. Toka Soccer is Eddie Toka Lewis, soccer, right? Yeah, he, as, as, he has the Toka machines where, you know, it's a training system. There's going to be doing like a Top Golf. Not that I'm, I need to plug Eddie Lewis's company, but I'm going to it, do it anyway. It's right around the corner. The, the Costa Mesa <laughs> one's right around the corner for me. So it's like three minutes from my house. Yep. But, but the, um, he's, he's a local hero as well. He went to my high school and he has some connection to kind of our, our Portuguese club as well. But what, speaking to him, one thing that he always credits his development to is when he was, you know, a kid in high school, 15, 16 years old, is playing in men's leagues with older men and pl playing with grown adults. And he says that made him such a better player because 
he had to figure it out. And, you know, he was a smaller guy, so he needed to figure out how to maneuver, how to be physical. And he, he credits his growth to playing in those leagues. Right. So to that point, I understand the rebranding piece of it. But if you're not playing against professionals, you're not playing against that competition, there's always going to be that steep curve when you have your, we always talk about it, our quadruple A players, your Jack McBeans, your Jose Villarreal's, where dominating in USL or dominating in MLS Next Pro, it doesn't always transfer to MLS or to the next professional level. So there is a benefit to playing against, you know, professionals and adults. So that's the part that as long as they're playing against <laughs> other MLS Next feeder academies, there's it's always going to be, it's not an apples to apples comparison. Right. So the, I don't know if, you know, they look for other avenues with, loaning players out like we've seen when they've loaned for Kranis out to Phoenix or maybe they that's that's the move is where they loan players out to these it's, USL clubs. It's not a bad levels. shout. It's not a bad yeah. shout at all. I, I mean yeah, so, that so is maybe that's where the system goes that it becomes to your point and what it is a third division and then if you want to give them second division then it becomes you find a different club and then the galaxy is the next step beyond that. that that's an interesting take though because i think so often and i've seen in the discord even the discord today it's like hey zavaleta is most likely going to start whenever they play against sporting kansas city that's what you would expect in this situation with martin casaris out serving his suspension uh for the red card that he got last time and it's people like well why isn't for kranis you gotta be there well mm-hmm. Quite honestly, because for Kranis is with Phoenix that right now and the Galaxy didn't want to put him with MLS Next Pro because that seems like it's probably below him. Mm-hmm. Right. I quite honestly even seeing Tucker Lepley, you know, down with uh, yeah. uh, Ventura County. <laughs> it's going to uh, take a while. Right? I know it is. Uh, <laughs> it, even seeing him, it's like that's below his level. Right. You know, and so you don't want to you, you kind of don't want to see some of that. But with for Kranis, they're literally saying no, we don't need you in MLS Next Pro. We need you in USL Championship, yeah. which is, you know, and Phoenix being a, a decent enough team over the years mm-hmm. that, that has produced some good, really good teams and some some not so good teams. It fluctuates in there and everything else in between. That's where we want to see the player development. We want to see you on a USL Championship level, not an MLS Next Pro level. And so um, I wouldn't be surprised if Will Koontz looking for places for guys to play, to like for guys to develop. We, we so often talk about guys who are like, third string fourth string in there right which yeah. is like oh it's not you know they're not usl championship but they're not mls they're somewhere you know it's quadruple a uh, in in baseball whenever we talk about it that's that's what you're sort of that's what you want to avoid with somebody like for Kranis, which is go play at usl championship keep developing and we're going to call you back and you're going to come in and we're going to you're going to get time here eventually but that's where it's at right now fun times you, you get you got the the goodie there I'm, I'm seeing in the chat that ventura county fc has just scored, so I believe that it is now going to be two to one as we go to our our co-host uh, <laughs> who's joining us there. So again, we'll see how this pans out. I think another interesting wrinkle when we're talking about U.S. Open Cup is how these when these MLS two clubs or the affiliates, if they do advance. Right now, you're seeing um, the the non MLS affiliated clubs coming out on top for a lot of these fixtures, just because to what Josh and I were speaking about, the, the level seems to be above where they're at. Even for some of these amateur teams, it is going to be interesting. Once we get into the next rounds, these matchups, if you have your, you know, B teams, your reserve teams who make it into the next round, then what, how is that going to play out once you start playing other MLS clubs, or if you start playing USL clubs, it's uh, to me, that's going to be the interesting wrinkle. We're just in the, thick of it in the beginning the stages are not in the thick of it we're in the beginning stages right now so right it's who's to say how it's going to pan out but once the mls clubs get into the fold you see which which number twos has have evolved and then what other amateur sides i think that that as much flack as mls is getting and us open cup is getting for the way it's being run i think the later stages are going to be drama filled and they're going to be intense because the, it feels like there's going to be higher stakes with that happening. So shout out to Ventura County FC. No. Yeah. Taking the lead. Yeah, that's it. That's the name. Um, <laughs> it, it was funny. Uh, it, uh, class trends. What if Ventura County hypothetically win it all and, and get a CCC? That's, yeah, it's weird, right? Yeah, I don't know. I don't <laughs> that's know. That's it. That's that's what that's what I want to see. I want to see something like that happen because it's just for the the team chaos of it all. Yep, yep. It should uh, it should be definitely interesting. <laughs> What's our next topic? Uh, next topic would be uh, undefeated teams and the okay. LA Galaxy. So you work on that while I try to put the kid back to bed. <laughs> so the LA Galaxy are one of nine unbeaten clubs uh, that are left here. So no, we we're going to be previewing 
against Sporting Kansas City in just a little bit here. But the interesting thing about the LA Galaxy and how they've been doing, uh, if, as much as the eye test has been telling us that this team is, is playing well, it's nice to see that show with other clubs as well. You see Cincinnati, who was uh, Supporter Shield winner, winners last season. You see Nashville, who's always in the mix. Philadelphia, who had it you know, a couple, uh, couple seasons ago. St. Louis, who had their hot start. And so when you see those teams and the Galaxy is now mentioned in those unbeaten clubs, it makes you feel good. The other side of the coin is you look at their record, there's only one win. And I think that's where it gets a little bit uneasy. And you say at some point the results have to matter. I said that all the time last season when uh, as someone who was a Greg Vanny on the hot seat type of guy uh, <laughs> is I, I said at some point you have to win games. At some point the results have to matter. And so I think – we're going to see where the galaxy pan out amongst these unbeaten teams is, are they going to start getting wins and start getting those three points? I think that's something that we need to look at. Or is this something where it's a little bit of a fool's gold where there's something wrong. There's, there's a disconnect somewhere, but as much as like I was saying, I was someone who's a Greg Vanny on the hot seat guy. I don't put any of these dropped points on Vanny. I'm seeing a free flowing team. I'm seeing a team that's, you know, really has the chemistry going this early in the season. You look, take away phantom red cards, missed PKs, some soft goalkeeping. Right. That's that to me is not on Greg Vanny. So uh, I, I, you see that them going up against SKC also who has an identical record. So that to me is going to be another interesting thing. They're one of the unbeaten teams. But they haven't been jumping off the page with their scores as well. So uh, I'm curious to see where they're going to go. One of the biggest improvements for the LA Galaxy this year, one of the reasons currently they're they're unbeaten. And this is crazy because people are going to say they just gave up you know three goals to St. Louis. But the LA Galaxy have one of the be- most improved defenses in all of Major League Soccer right now. Um, if you look at basically it's expected goals against per 90 for 2023 and expected goals against per 90 for 2024. And if you look at what the differences are right now, Colorado is 0.61 better. Charlotte is 0.59 better. Atlanta 0.53 better. And the galaxy are 0.51 better. So a half a goal better, which is huge over the course of a season. I mean, you can say, so that's 17 goal difference (laughs) if you want to project that out. And of course, is it, is it too early to make definitive announcements about this? Yeah, it is. But what you're seeing, and by the way, the trend for the LA galaxy and has been the trend for the galaxy under Greg Vanny is to start out fairly well defensively and then float themselves right into trouble throughout the rest of the year. So saying that too early now, why did they float themselves into trouble so many times is because the offense wasn't doing the part that they really needed to do. The team defense wasn't being played. They had to, they had to come from behind too many times. So then they risked themselves defensively. You're hoping that they're able to set up in the defensive situ- in the defensive setup that they like and they feel comfortable in. Right. Um, Yamane is one of the reasons that they're playing better. You know, there's a whole yeah. bunch of other reasons. The team defense that we've seen on display, even from Paintsel, who runs all the way back and then gives up a penalty kick, but he ran all the way back and made a defensive play. This is your best, you know, your best player on the team is running all the way back. He's committed to the defense. So there's a commitment there. Let's see if the Galaxy can have enough offense on the front end of that to be able to stick with their defensive commitments. Because yeah. um, I don't know that we've seen finished products on defense yet. I think there's far too many individual mistakes. Yeah. that And that's, that's kind of the double edged sword where you say, well, last season we said, well, that's on Vanny. He's got to set up the, 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 the tactics in order to make up for the deficiencies that he's noticing to limit those individual mistakes. The things that I pointed out were, on the individuals, but in terms of tactics and how they're set up, I don't see an issue with it. That's why I'm not pointing the fingers at Vanny. Something that I think, I don't think it gets overlooked. We talked about it all last season. The injuries also really killed the LA Galaxy last season in terms of, of defense. You had a lot of, uh, you know, backup starters, starters who, you know, were, you know, you, someone like Yoshida was brought in because that you needed help in the center back position. It wasn't all the way there. So through injury was another reason why the galaxy struggled. You didn't have a consistent, you know, center back pairing. And so there, there was chaos uh, on that defense. So I think one thing where you have to keep your fingers crossed, you have to knock on wood is to hope that everyone stays healthy because that's going to make a difference. I think one of the undercover blows with, with, was when Gaston Brugman went out for the season. Yep. That's not a defensive line thing but that impacted the defense greatly. And I think that's something that we're going to start to see as he starts to get those minutes a little bit more into each game. I think as well as Surreal has been playing and he had his his moments, 
I think it's time to put Brugman in there because yep. I think he's someone who's going to limit those mistakes and he's going to make the difference. Thinking back to that that St. Louis game, uh, you know, once he came on, you saw the world of difference, and that's that's no disrespect to Surreal, but you just it's a different level. We talk about drop offs and and step ups and replacements, you know, replacement value, whatever you want to call it. Right. When Brugman comes in. You see him on the ball. You see what he brings. He's a, basically a second captain on the field as well, which if you're not watching uh, you know, the R Galaxy <laughs> videos, they had a cool thing about the team leaders, which Greg Vanny pointed to Maya Yoshida specifically. Yep. And he talked about his age and his, how he's willing to impart his wisdom for the players who he sees have the hunger and have the initiative to move forward. But the other player who was heavily featured in that was Gaston Brugman. So I think you have him basically as a vice captain once he gets on the field and he can clean up a lot of those issues that you have on defense. Cause I think, you know, some silly mistakes you have Ricky pushing really far back, right? As much as I love to see the commitment from paint still coming back. The, the one critique that I would say is paint still almost needs to chill a little bit. He's almost going so hard. He he's so aggressive and so after it, we saw it happen with the penalty against Nashville. That's he's so committed that he actually ends up getting in his own way, you know, and fumbling. And so that's, that's the one critique. But if you could take that responsibility responsibility away from him, you know, have Brugman provide that cover, have Delgado provide that cover. Yamane, we've seen how he fits in there. Yep. I, th- I think that's massive, uh, you know, when they can start taking those responsibilities away from people like Pooj and away from people like Pinsil, because then the offense can continue to hum, and then you're able to shore up that defense and make a difference, even though it's not technically on the back line. Th- those moves make a huge difference. Huge. Well, I mean, we saw we saw just the combination between Surio and Puj in the last game cost the LA Galaxy a goal. Mm-hmm. And, you know, some, some of that on Surio, a lot of that on Puj, too, just in terms of how he attempted to play that. I still, I've watched that replay 17 times, <laughs> and I still don't know what he's trying to do because he does a weird flick thing with his foot. And I'm like, what What are you doing in that situation? Yeah, we, we I, would, I wasn't here to recap the game, but right. my, my takeaways, and I think you said it, Brilliantly is that game felt like a win. It felt like a loss. It's kind of a magic eye thing. However you saw it, you're, you're right. right. If, yeah. if you if the, you felt like the Galaxy deserved the draw, then you're right. But if you felt like they didn't deserve a draw or they deserved to win, I understand where you, where you feel that because that's where I personally feel. I feel like they played too well to fight for a draw. Uh, you know, they looked, they looked so good and just to have those silly mistakes. And the difference was in those two plays. The opening goal was a build for the from the back. Don't panic. Don't just boot it forward. Take have patience. St. Louis. I was really impressed with how well and how hard they pressed. They were a tough team yep. th- with how how high they press and how pu- hard they push. The, I was impressed with that the Galaxy were able to get out of that and create that first goal. But the the negative, the other side of the coin is if you make them, if you miss that pass by a hairline, if you make a mistake, then you have a team that's pressing like that. They're going to make you pay for those mistakes. So. Would they have been better suited to just boot it and to, you know, clear it out and not play out of the back? Who's to say? But then maybe you don't get the first goal from playing like that. So that to me is is you get you get it all in, in that sense is if you're if they're coached to play out of the back, to have patience, to have those moves, overlapping runs, then you have to trust that. And you're going to get burned by it every once in a while, but you're going to get goals from it as well. So you have to take you have to take the good with the bad with that. The one thing that I I was not impressed with, and I know you touched on a little bit, was you know uh, McCarthy, John McCarthy, J Mac. <laughs> fool me once, shame on shame on you. Fool me twice, just don't fool me again. My my George W. Uh, reference there. I think the first one with contact, it was a little soft. He maybe had an argument. He didn't have by the second corner. You know they're not going to call it. So you have to come out strong. You have to come out elbows and 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 teeth and and do whatever you have to do. Goalkeepers, that's their job. That's that's the one thing you have to do. And I was a little bit surprised just because what we were sold on John McCarthy and when Bond was was released is he's a he's a vocal leader. He's has that strong presence. And it sounds like a veiled dig at Bond, but I don't remember Bond having an issue, you know, on corners and and flopping and kind of expecting to get those calls. If it happened, it happened. But to me, McCarthy was playing too much for the contact as opposed to going for the ball. I think uh, the first one, he's, you know, there's chaos in the box. That house, that's how St. Louis set up. It's they still, it's still, on it. it it's still a super lucky goal. Can we just talk about that for well, the, the, the bicycle? The kick bicycle kick, for kick for sure. is super yeah, lucky. It's the and, XG on that was not high. For and sure. and I would still argue that there's a better chance. The first one's a foul than maybe the second, the second one. A hundred percent. But, at, but once you know, the first one's not a foul, then you can't be, he was, 
he he was ready to complain to the ref before the corner was kicked just because of the the pushing and shoving that was going on there. That's, right. From the outside looking in, that's what it looked like. So to me, if you know that's how it's going to be called, then you can't you can't be complaining to the ref because the precedent has already been set. Even though we've talked about the inconsistencies that that have happened, it was with I, the it was no, the scab referees. Yeah, it was huge. Uh, Popo Zhao, ten dollars super chat. If you had to pick five penalty kick shooters for the Galaxy after one hundred and twenty minutes, who are you picking? Uh, Brugman's in on that, so I'm saying Brugman. Brugman yeah, because uh, yeah, even wondering. if he doesn't start, he's in towards right. the end there. Brugman's in. Paint Paint still, stick him. Yeah, okay. Paintsil's in. Okay, easy. Um, I would say Yoshida. I'm going to say Maya okay. Yoshida is a good penalty kick taker. He just, I don't think he's rattled by the pressure, so I think you put him in there. It's either him or Kosaris, and I think that I'm going to go with Yoshida. It seems a little more... <laughs> more, more, more on, more on the calm level. level. Like he, level, he does, yeah, he doesn't, he doesn't let it do it. All right. Um, yes. I'm gonna go with an unpopular, unpopular pick. I'm gonna go with Dejan Jovalic. I know he missed, he's missed a couple, mm-hmm. but I, I think if he's your striker, you have to have him taking it. And I, I, my confidence isn't totally rattled on him. I was watching uh, <laughs> some, some psychology videos on a penalty kick, and it's how. You know, you have to have two or three of your kickers kick down the middle. And so after hearing Vanny ex- explain that, that was the plan. He didn't, you know, the goalie had the foot out, but I, I don't completely fault Dayon. I don't think it was, I thought it was uh, a good save. But it, it was, it was, it was just slightly yeah, misplaced. So, slightly so I misplaced. Think you need to get yeah. Dayon on. He's okay. my fourth. Fourth. Okay. So, so fifth. fifth. Who's your Delgado? Do you put Delgado? Is, that's, that's a good shout. Uh, for me, let's see. Uh, 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 King, uh, King Darwin, uh, Delgado, Brugman, Paintsil, Peck. Yamane. Oh, Peck. Peck. Yeah, we didn't. We didn't I mean, consider Peck. We didn't but... consider Peck. I, I think that's probably fine. Um, let's see if anybody else has any of their their picks. Write your picks in there. We'll go over some of them as as we uh, as we go Peck. through it. But thank you for that. Yes. Peck does give me a little bit of the pooge going for the finesse. Yes. Not necessarily just banging it in. He doesn't feel like he's gonna that feels, have that power like a Caceres. That like feels Yoshida. very American bias to me, yeah. which is like I don't <laughs> stop making it fancy, just knock well, it in the net. You know, it's we like, we have the sample size of Brazilians of Neymar, his run up and his you know the 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 theatrics that go into some of those penalty shootouts for from some Brazilians. So you know that's our shade at the Brazilians. There, you, I, they don't inspire. Tons of confidence in, in terms the, of penalty. penalty kicks. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant skills, and I trust them on a counterattack and with ball controls. But right. I, you know, for a penalty, I don't know. Yeah, I know what you mean. I know what you mean. It, it's like uh, really a guy who has taken, I think, significant little steps for. You know, I say significant, and then then put in little steps, but has taken some <laughs> good steps forward for me. Has actually been out a. Um, and using his flair and his ability to break guys down and to beat mm-hmm. guys one on I mean, as a defender, to be able to pass around guys one on one and get in, you saw it in the first goal against St. Louis. That's why that's why he's out there, right? That's why yeah. John Nelson isn't going to give you that, right? And mm-hmm. so that's why Aude is starting. Still a lot of liabilities for me, but yeah. in passing um, and in defense sometimes. Um, I'm not one of these people who's going to continue on this whole, he's too soft and he falls down and blah, blah, blah. I'm over that. I don't think that that's his, I don't think that's his game. I think he legitimately gets fouled on a regular basis. <laughs> yeah. So that's, there's, th- that's the difference, right? right? Because there are players who are, who milk the situation going back to me, my little uh, rant on McCarthy, who was milking the situation a little bit. Was he obstructed? Probably, but was he really bumped into? Not, not really. So there was more, there was more complaining than actually out a legitimately gets, his ankles and hit in, and, and stepped on a lot. And so you you can make that argument. But to me, what I see without it is the potential. He, right. he, the potential, you see it in there. It's very raw. There's still a lot to build on that. But to me, he has a lot, a lot of upside. And I think you've seen the leap from last year to this year. You've seen it. Well, it's, it's maybe not as big as you know, uh, the Julian Araujo year when he made the leap right. from one year to the next. But there is a, there is a good leap. Uh, without a from last season to this season. One of the things we wanted to highlight as well before we dive into the day on Jovalich show, because trust me, that's coming. Uh, uh, Will Coons put out a letter to season ticket members, and I thought I'd share some of it with you. Uh, basically comes out and says, Dear season ticket members, first and fo- foremost, I want to express my sincere gratitude for your unwavering support and patience over the past few years. I understand that it hasn't been easy to invest your heart and soul into our club without consistently seeing the results we all desire and expect from the galaxy. Even when change is necessary, it's not always swift or simple or 
uh, to, or simple to implement. However, your passion and loyalty to the club have been palpable, especially during our toughest times. It was this very dedication that made my decision to join the Galaxy one of the easiest in my career. Having witnessed firsthand the unwavering support you provide, I am confident to get, that together we can achieve remarkable things. Uh, while I can't guarantee that we will secure the MLS Cup this year, I can promise that we will give our all in every single game and strive to represent our club with pride both on and off the field. We will continue to compete relentlessly. We will persevere through challenges and through victory in every match. Uh, and the, although uh, victory in every match may elude us, we will never give up. It's still early in the season, but I hope you've already witnessed the fighting spirit displayed in our game thus far. There's much, much more to come. So um, there's there's more to that as well. I, I implore you to, to search it out on social media to sort of get it out. Um, I just would like to point out just the tone change and everything that's going on around the LA Galaxy, whether it is uh, Andrew uh, in one our Discord who used to uh, write for Corner of the Galaxy back in the day, who's one of my good, good buddies, uh, was on the Discord today and he's like, I can't tell you how much fun I had at the last home game. Like, one, the soccer was exciting. He goes, yeah, they didn't get the win, but it was exciting. It was fun to watch the Galaxy play a, a very attractive way of playing soccer right now. So it's exciting to be there. But just the stadium and everything around it and just the positivity that's around the fan base now, there's something there, right? There's something that's mm -hmm. building behind it. And I think Andrew's tapping into that something. And I think Will, with his letter, uh, is tapping into that as well. So it's just words. Doesn't mean anything, yeah. especially especially <laughs> if uh, you know the Galaxy go on a ten game losing streak, right? It doesn't it doesn't mean a <laughs> lot. You that, know? that was where my brain went, as, as well worded as that was, and and I love Will for for putting it out there. It's only, we're only four games in. It's not like they're 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 making this incredible one, run. There's only one win, uh, but what it does tell me is that Will sees the potential that this team has. The line that stands out to me is while I can't guarantee that we will secure MLS Cup this year, he sees. Okay, the the signings that we made and the team that we're putting out on the field, that's po that's a possibility. We're right. we're not going to guarantee that it's going to happen because right. that's it's a very tough thing. But just putting that sentence in there shows this team has something in it that can get to those levels. Maybe they're not there, but he's he's seen it. <laughs> they're seeing it behind the scenes. We're seeing it from the outside. Something looks and feels different, and so it's easy to say these words. And I think he's even said it. Uh, you know, last season when 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 Klein was, oh, you know, part when they parted ways, he said, listen, it's easier for me to tell you I, you have to we have to show you at some point. And I think that was kind of his line that he was saying in the preseason and leaning up to it. And so he's still sticking with that. They that we have to be patient and they have to show us. But I think he he sees and the front office sees and the people in the organization see this team has the potential uh, to, to do big things and to make a run and to, to be a, a team that's, you know, um, fun to watch and gets the results on the field. I, is it too early to put this out there? Maybe, but at the same time, they're, they're, they're feeling themselves. They see, okay, right. They're, the pieces are all here. It's just a matter of, uh, you know, getting everything, all the, the stars to line up to make it work. But I, I, I like the confidence, uh, of seeing what they've constructed and the possibility forward because we we've seen it and we've talked about it with the games that we've covered. We want them to get the results, but you see how they're playing. They're playing, they're playing well. And you see if this continues and they grow even more in the chemistry builds and maybe they bring in some pieces in the summer to, to fine tune and fill some gaps Then this team, who, who knows? We, we've seen teams make uh, bigger leaps than where the galaxy were uh, to MLS cup winners. So wh why not us? Yeah. Why not us? A lot of things can happen why when not? you break. Why, why not? not? Why not? Dare to dream. Dare to slot time. <laughs> that's what that's what I like to see. All right. Very good. Um, by the way, uh, a couple super chats. Adam, five dollar super chat. Any new update on Jalen Neal? When is the next press availability? Uh, I believe that they had press availability today. Um, I don't know that we know anything new on Jalen Neal just yet. Um, a, once this is how it usually works. Once reporters start seeing him around and seeing him working and seeing stuff, that's when you're going to start getting questions about Word him. Word will get out. Right, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, it's not going to be a hidden thing. They will absolutely find out. And I know everybody's sort of like waiting, but I think we said, you know, really it was in the, you know, four to eight weeks or six to eight weeks, whenever the, so we were going to be two months, you know, really in, we're getting closer to that. And that's like return to play, which is in eight weeks, you'll be returning to play. That's not, you're ready to play. Um, so there's some time I'm still on the Jalen Neal thing, but um, I think whenever he comes back, everybody will be excited to see what he can do. And then it's going to be up to the Galaxy. They're going to have to manage his minutes for a little while. Yeah. And that's going to be, everybody's going to be upset about that too. 
Um, but feathering him back in, which is one of the reasons maybe you don't see Brugman coming right yeah. back in and starting again, because they're going to feather his minutes and he came off, come off a really bad injury. You know, this is a guy who, who's, uh, who's, who's a little bit older. And so you need to just be a little bit careful with it. And so what are you going to see? Well, you might see Surreal keep starting right for a little bit longer, a couple more games. It's the same thing sort of with Peck in a different way, which is they really want to get him understanding how the galaxy play. And when he understands that he's going to start, right. And then Fagundes is going to be his backup and everything else that sort of comes to that. But right now with the way the galaxy are rolling, there's time on their hands. They have it, but I want to see more. I think you need to see more minutes from Peck and Really, I want to see more minutes from Peck with Paintsol still on the field. I don't want them to be like for like swaps whenever yeah. it happens either. But uh, Vanny is very, um, I think, conservative with not losing defense whenever he does this. Right, so he he will do it, but he'll need goals when he when he goes yeah. to do it. I think the luxury Vanny is coming from now is they're getting results. They are unbeaten, and so when you're unbeaten, you can take your time with not rushing players back you can say hey we're getting we're still getting results even with our quote unquote backups so why am i going to change things if if we're getting positive results and we're playing well so i think that's the buffer that you have if some losses start to string together or you get a run of draws and they just can't seem to win then that's where you need to start looking and saying okay maybe we need to push brugman in a little faster maybe we need to get peck involved a little bit more because the wins aren't coming and so that's i that's where i was hinting at with Brugman that maybe when you have some of these mistakes that maybe it is start time to start, you know, pressing him a little harder so you can get more minutes out of him right. because they're that way you can get more points out of it. That's, that's what it's going to come down to. If Surya was in there and you had more wins, then yeah, you continue to give Brugman five minutes, 10 minutes, let him take his time to get fully, fully healthy because the, then you're, you're managing your risk. But if you're not getting the wins, yeah. then that's when the questions start to come and maybe, that's when you start to do it. So they have the luxury right now of being unbeaten. Even though even though they only have one win, right? Same, as, same as Sporting <laughs> yeah. Kansas City, by it's the way. It's a fine line. Just, yeah. just the same thing, right? So the whole day. Thin margin. Uh, Darren, by the way, uh, $11.01 Super Chat celebrating episode 1101 since I couldn't watch 1100 live. Thank you, Darren. We appreciate Perfect. that. Um, appreciate that, Darren. I, 1101. Right? We did it, Joe. We, we did, did it. it. We 1101. Did it. We did. I don't know what to do with my hands, though. Um, <laughs> I told Kevin on the podcast, I really try not to make him have even numbers of podcasts. That way he can't get the the numbers, like the the big ones. And <laughs> yeah. um, that's true. Uh, 100% just, true. It just worked out. Yeah. Just worked out. Uh, we do have a live event coming up. Can I can announce it yet? But we, Is it breaking news? It's, not, no, not yet. Oh, yeah, okay. Not yet, um, but expect to hear something. I hope by Monday um, where we'll have a live event and you can join us. And I will say specifically, perhaps if you are not going to go to the LAFC game and maybe you're going to watch it somewhere, maybe that would be a place that possibly we could be. But we're still finalizing things, so I don't want to I don't want to tease it too hard um, in case everything falls apart at the last second. But uh, yeah, <laughs> something's coming. Fair Trust enough. me, you know, Fair enough. Uh, as, as somebody uh, somebody within the galaxy once told me, it's not done until it's done. And even then it's not done. OK, so I'll, I'm like, OK, 10 for roger that yeah every prestigious tournament started as a cash grab at some point I think <laughs> there you that's go. the relation yeah everything was not something and it was nothing at one point uh is that a thing that is yeah, a, I thing. Think that's a thing i'm sure it is uh day on Jovalich looking to make mls history or tie mls history tie brian mcbride throwback brian mcbride with the columbus crew by the way let's just let's just that that, that to me say that's that's your real mls head if, if you know that one right that's 1998 uh, Brian McMride started the first uh, five games of a season with a goal, five goals. Now, this is th- this is really interesting because uh, Dan Yovlach has four through four. Yovlach uh, has four game, four goals through four games. Um, there's Castellanos was the last one who did it in, in 2021. You had uh, Kubo Torres for Houston uh, in 2017. Kubo Torres for Houston for for Chivas in 2014. <laughs> That's uh, how I always remember him is for the Chivas USA right? days. Yeah. At Zimbabwe, Los Angeles with four in 2010. Carlos Ruiz with four in 2004. Carlos Ruiz with four in 2002. So some pretty big LA Galaxy royalty there with Edson Buttle and Carlos Ruiz and all that fun stuff that Dayon Jovalich is currently tied with and for, will forever be in the history books right there. Mm-hmm. But getting the fifth one is a big one. And I think yeah. there's a good chance that he can do it because we've seen him. It's, you know, I, I've sort of been going back and forth. We talked about expected goals for him and his expected goals are four and he scored four and it's sort of like he's doing what he's being expected to do. But really, if you're a striker, 
um, and you're a really good striker in a certain amount of time, you usually overperform your expected goals, right? So mm-hmm. like you're going to find ones that like you shouldn't have gotten. Yes. <laughs> and this is also an accumulation. It wasn't like, you know, you, you can't get a 1.0 expected goal, right? Like there is no such thing as one, right? You could even a penalty kick, I think is 0.71 or point mm-hmm. point seven somewhere in there, right? On expected goals. So even when you get, so his point, he has a 0.7 in here that didn't go in because he was a penalty kick. Right. And this is, you know, that type of thing. And so when you look at, I think it was non penalty. So, um, but like, if you look at sort of the stuff that he has, it's been an accumulation, which means that there's been chances that have been missed as we all can see with our eyes. Right. So it's now it's about the next step for him. The next step would be scoring in his fifth consecutive, uh, game. Now, the funny thing is Brian McBride. If I told you Brian McBride scored five goals in the first five games, how many goals do you think he ended with in that season? Well, I know you're asking me that because it's probably not going to be a super high number. Uh, it's, is, it, is it 15? You are high. Okay. Oh, wow. Yeah. 12? You're still high. Wow. 10? 10. Less than 10? 10. 10, exactly. 10, and I believe but Columbus... how many and, games in the season? Yeah, there was probably... it wasn't 34. Maybe 28 in that, in that okay. particular time, so a little less, right? The, the whole deal, but still 10. I mean, you start Man, with five, you dropped off. <laughs> it's one of those things, right? And so that makes me nervous. Now, this is a warning sign. That's what I'm yeah. saying. This is also mm-hmm. a warning sign, which is, it's not just about the four goals and four games. It's not just about the five goals and five games for, for Yoba Leach. It's about the consistency to be able to do it over and over again. And this is great. And this is awesome. And it's exactly what the LA galaxy are asking for him. And we've already talked about it on pace to score 34 <laughs> goals. Right. So, um, that's, that's what, what, what do you make a Yoba Leach's start? It's you, you, the Yovel Leach situation. Again, I still have to train myself uh, to say that because I do want to make sure we're saying that correctly for his sake. It's one of the most fascinating, you know, narratives in this LA Galaxy season with the the DP additions and with you know the changes in the vibes around the team. To me, the Yovel Leach situation is fascinating because if you told us, you know, you've mentioned this on the show before. If you told us at the beginning of the season. You know, if he starts the game where he scores, he starts the season where he scores in the first four games, we'd say, all right, problem solved. Yep, you know, in, in DJ, we trust <laughs> the chess master. We are good. We're done. We have right. our striker. No need to shop around. We are set for the season. But after watching the games, you watch it and you say, great, he's he's done his job. He's tapped in those goals. But then he he's left so much meat on the bone also. Yep. Yep. And he's left it enough to where people are questioning Man, imagine if we had, and you've, I've seen this take from people, imagine if we had a quote-unquote real striker. Imagine if we had you know, a, a goal scorer who was just banging them away. Imagine if we had Zlatan on this team. That's, that's a take that I've seen as well because he was so good at putting these goals away. And I think that's a fair thing to say too. So it goes back to my discussion when we were comparing uh, U.S. Open Cup and League's Cup. Why do you have to hate one? to love the other. I think the answer is, you know, why not, you know, both can be enjoyed. And I think that's what you can say about Jovalic in this, this season is if you're happy with how he's doing, you're, you are correct. Right. If you're disappointed with how he's doing, you are, you're correct. also correct. Just stay on side. Yeah. Just stay on side, dude. That's but all. I don't care. Not only stay on side, but no, the, four games. To, it's good enough, Eric. We can't play this game, the, but, if, but we're going to, yeah, it's good enough for now. But to your point, if, Next if he went, if he went four more games and didn't score, you'd be worried. I'd be worried. And so I think there's been situations where we've seen it last season where he's had similar situations and he didn't score. Right. And so he has that capability to have a drought. And to me, what I want to see from Jovalic in the next two or three games, even if he doesn't score against Sporting Kansas City, I need him to get a brace. I need him to get a hat trick. I think he needs to have that confidence builder to where he has a multi-goal game and that's that right. to me is what gonna it's gonna get him rolling because if he just gets the one that ends up being a tap in you know like i said with pencil shooting it off of his forehead and going in that's fine he that's Gold, fine and we'll boot, be okay with golden that golden boot winner golden <laughs> but boot winner we need winner. to see i think for his confidence and to get him pushing to the next level he needs a, a multi-goal game and that will quiet that will quiet the noise around it right. and and the people who are not happy with how he's doing and it will 
it will make us feel a little bit better about the situation. That to me is the next thing that I want to see from Milvolich is a multi-goal game. Darren has a, he says, stay on side and don't cabral the finish. There it is. It's a verb <laughs> it's now. right there. We've seen, well, th- this is why we're scarred. We're, this is why Will <laughs> Koontz is sending out those letters. Right. Because we've seen it all go wrong. We we've need, seen it go sideways. You need we've the seen love the bad letters. Chicharito season. Yeah. You need the love letters. You need, you need yeah. to be reminded. You're the whole deal. Uh, Juan, $5 super chat. Grateful for the show. Thanks guys. Here's $1 for every goal day on will have after the next game. See? <laughs> on point Perfect. 100%. I love that. That's a so great take. It's it is a great take. Um let me see here. Hold on. My son is in here for the fourth or fifth time. He's just going to stand there in the corner for a second. Right. It's fine. Well, one I'll, uh, I'll go back to Okay. Go ahead. No, you please. Need him? No, right. yeah, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> the other thing that I'll say um that made us nervous in the off season when we were talking about Jovalich is he going to be the guy and right now I think with four goals in and he's on pace for 34, you're pretty happy with the striker situation. Uh, I saw it in the chat as well, the drop-off from Barry. I think one of the things that made us nervous about jo- Jovalic being the starter is if something happens, if he goes through a slump, then who are you going to have fill those shoes? And I think with Miguel Barry going in there, you say he has some goals in, in Atlanta and, and Columbus and some previous things going on. But when you see him on the field, he doesn't come across like – the day on super sub or the right. Alan Gordon type guy who's going to get that goals. He seems to me like someone who slows the pace a little bit more, maybe needs that level of service like day has been getting to get some tap ins. He's not going to be the type of guy that creates. So I think that's, that compounds the day on issue is that if you don't have someone who can come off the bench to save you and rescue you, then you need your starter to put in two goals or to put in the sitters that are right in front of you to convert your PKs because off the bench, you don't have, you know, someone coming to save the day. So I think having Barry as the backup is something that's in the back of our minds that makes us a little bit nervous because, you know, maybe he can prove us wrong. We talked about it in the preseason that we we gave our, uh, you know, 12 minutes to Miguel Barry, and that's as much as we were going right. to talk about him. Right. But he is getting minutes in these games and he has not He hasn't looked bad. He hasn't, he hasn't looked, looked bad, bad he, but I don't he's see created, that. He's created, but I, yeah. I just, he's created in the sense that he has, he has caused problems for a defense. It, it's not created as in terms of he's scored a goal or he's led directly to a goal being scored, right? One of those things, but that's, yeah, you, that's you, what I'm not seeing. Yeah. I'm not seeing the game changing. I, I agree. Piece. I agree. Yeah. Uh, by the way, uh, through four games played during the 2024 campaign, Joseph Patesel has three goal contributions two goals and one assist leads MLS in shots that have hit the post and two that was in this that was uh we've seen that twice now uh and then uh uh, uh and then ranks tied for 12th in the league and chances created eight and tied for 14th and dribbles completed so just a little update on on pencil there and what he's doing we look at the LA Galaxy schedule uh the Galaxy coming up Sporting Kansas City 5 30 p.m coming up on Saturday and then the Galaxy will host host Seattle on March 30th so that'll be uh, an interesting game when all of that comes through. And then if you look into it, April 6th, the LA Galaxy at LAFC, home, uh, away to uh, Vancouver, and then home to San Jose, and then away to Austin. April, mostly away for the LA Galaxy. Yeah. Three games interesting all on the road. Yeah. And yeah, early, early El Trafico, which I think they're always, always an early one. It always that, feels that's like an it. interesting wrinkle yeah. as well. Um, yeah. Going back to Paint Sill, yeah. something that uh, we mentioned Puj last season being, you know, a uh, MVP caliber candidate, I'll mention it. And uh, it's too early to say it. It's way too early. We're always talking about our guaranteed to be wrong predictions. If paint still keeps playing the way he's playing, he's going to be in that MVP conversation. And the galaxy the has to keep playing the way they're playing yeah. too. Right. It's, it's just like Ricky Pouge can always should be in an MVP conversation, but he's not going to be one because he didn't play a lot of defense. And two is because the galaxy sucked. Right. Your MVP has to be on a team that's at least competing for something. Right. Mm -hmm. You can't have your MVP be in 13th place. Right. Like it it doesn't matter. how. Oh, wow. You're a really good MVP. Your team's in 13th, you know, and (laughs) like sometimes. But if they didn't have me, we'd be in 14th. Right. Exactly. You know, but sometimes with Zlatan, you were sort of saying, well, I mean, you know, that guy with that dude, maybe. Um, So. Uh, so yeah, so so sort of watching that, and as we continue on, uh, we can watch paint still develop and and just how he continues to do um, all those fun things. Uh, I was watching in and Ventura County currently up two one, I believe, in about the sixty sixty fifth somewhere in there. Just in case you're you're wondering, as that game's going on live as we're recording this, uh, all the things that have gone wrong so far on the show, I just like to point out. Uh, my kid is coming now, I think four times. Uh, A and, record, yep, record for for the little man. Yep, my SD card is full, so it's not recording oh. the show. But don't worry, oh, YouTube, YouTube is taking care of that for right now, oh, so we'll, we'll be okay. Don't worry. Let's I, I have backups. Say a prayer to Spectrum right now. Right, the, 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 that's 
that's the only thing that can go wrong. I we're going to speak very kindly uh, about all front office people. And, right. <laughs> yeah, we're going to make sure that nothing, <laughs> we don't get the bullet through the show now. Uh, Fun times. Gary with a $10 super chat. Thank you both very much for all the work you put into this pod. This pod for a lot of us is a rad way to relax and unwind and talk to fellow Galaxy fans. It is very much appreciated, you guys. Thank you, Gary. Appreciate that. Thank you for the super chat. Always nice. Um, and, and you guys have been appreciate awesome. Appreciate you, Gary. Awesome with super chats. Always, uh, as you have. We we. Excuse me, we appreciate the support. Uh, Let's dive in, I believe now is the appropriate time to do so, um, and talk a little bit about this game coming up. The LA Galaxy traveling to Kansas City. Again, identical 1-0-3 records uh, for LA and Kansas City. So they will be off and traveling to play Sporting Kansas City. If you look, the last three times the LA Galaxy have played Sporting Kansas City, they have all been draws. So if you're looking at an omen for what is going to (laughs) possibly be happen, that could be the thing. Uh, The last time there was a winner in one, of these was actually in 2022 sporting Kansas city uh, has a fairly good unbeaten streak at home. Uh, The LA galaxy. I don't believe have beaten sporting Kansas city in sporting Kansas city since uh, 2019. All right. Now, that's that's tough to do. It's always been tough to do. This is one yeah. of those games where you sit there and say it doesn't matter what shape the two teams are in. Uh, they seem to go into this and it's always a difficult place to play. Um, and Sporting Kansas City. Listen, the underlying numbers are not great for Sporting Kansas City. I think I talked about them on Monday saying, you know, they're a pretty good team. Just looking at the results they're getting. Mm-hmm. Uh, I did a little more diving and listened to some more podcasts, people talking about Sporting Kansas City. And the bottom line is the numbers aren't great for them. Uh, yeah. You know, they uh, their one win also against San Jose. So very similar to the LA Galaxy. Yeah. But at was, home versus San Jose. It was at home. Uh, it was it was against San Jose. They ended up winning two to one. All three goals in that game scored inside the first 30 minutes. Um, I I really feel like sporting Kansas city is a team that is, you can't go to sleep on their front. Three is a very dangerous front three. They can actually, they can absolutely do damage to you. And if you're not paying attention, next thing, you know, that game's two, nothing, and you're not going to get it back and, and wrestle it back. So, um, the defensive side of things for me in the LA galaxy, very important this particular time. Uh, but when you look at are the points on the table, Eric, um, this, if you, if you want to talk about how these two teams are playing, (laughs) And which one is in the better form and which one you would expect to sort of have the better chance at stealing three points is probably the L.A. Galaxy. And that being said, getting a point on the road at Kansas City is still a good result for this team. Although, as Maya Yoshida said, blah, 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 we need three points. It doesn't matter. We need three points. What what do you think? I I love Yoshida for saying that because that's exactly what we have on our mind. To me, I, I have in my notes the games against uh, Sporting Kansas City or the Kansas City Wizards have been some of the most snooze fest type of games that I've seen the Galaxy play in over the years. So that's something that worries me a little bit is there's always some stinkers when they go up against Sporting Kansas City that's happened the last couple seasons as well. Well, to Josh's point in terms of looking at the results and digging a little bit deeper, you look at the games that the Galaxy have, you know, had their, their draws in come from behind exciting multiple goals. You look at sporting Kansas city and their total goals scored is just four goals. They've only scored four goals this season in four matches. So as much as Dayan Jovalich has scored, Sporting Kansas City has scored that same amount for their whole team. So 1-1 draws uh, at Houston, 1-1 draw at home against Philadelphia, 0-0 draw at LAFC, and then that 2-1 win against San Jose. So it's not like they're lighting up the scoreboard, even though players like Alan Polito and Daniel Shelley are guys who are dangerous. My Johnny, uh, you know, Johnny Russell M- in there as well. I was right? going to say my MLS hall pass crush is Johnny Russell. Right. He's the one guy who I wish, you know, the galaxy had a player like that, which we basically have the, you know, Joseph Paintsill is what Johnny Russell was doing to the league, right. uh, you know, three, four or five seasons ago. And so he's someone who's always going to be dangerous. So th- that top three uh, you, makes you worry. And so, I think Alan Polito isn't someone who has been able to get it fully going. So he's not someone that scares me as much, but shall we, um, Russell always seemed to get it done. Someone who I didn't realize was on sport in Kansas city, digging into it. Memo Rodriguez is on the team. So okay. is this the memo Rodriguez revenge game? <laughs> uh, is that something there where he gets involved? Eric Tommy's another player who has killed the galaxy of late right. when, he, whenever they play against them, he's someone who's always in the mix. So there are players there that, you know, put fear into me. That's one thing right, wrong or indifferent. One thing that I judge when I look at other lineups, I say, do they scare me? And when you look at that, some of these players do scare me a little bit. And so going away and getting a point at Kansas city would absolutely be a good thing on paper. 
But when you look at how the Galaxy have played and you look at how Kansas City isn't exactly lighting other teams up, you say, well, maybe a, a win is possible. Maybe you could make up those three points. I look at the win against San Jose, which was an away win. The win, there was a tie at home against Miami, but you won away at uh, San Jose. So same difference. If you right. take that as a win at home versus Miami and a draw at San Jose, you'd be just as happy. So you had the draw at home against St. Louis. So maybe the win away at Kansas City, it all makes itself whole. And then you'd still four points at the end of the day. So to me, I feel like, it's a possibility for three points. I think they would be happy uh, with one point, depending on how the game goes. But I think they need to be careful not to get into a drawn into a slog to where they're going to be have the life sucked out of them. Because I think that is something that happens when you go away to Kansas City with the way their stadium is and the way the environment is. I think that is something that a lot of teams fall into that trap and why you see a lot of low scoring games because of the, you know, Vermees ball, if you want to call it that. Right. And I think that's something that they need to be careful. If they keep flying high, they keep, you know, pressing, uh, I've mentioned it in previous years, counterattacking team cosplaying as a possession team. Now they have that counterattacking speed. And so if they can expose them and break those lines, I think they could absolutely get some goals and, and cause some problems for, for sporting Kansas city. Yeah. And try to do it early. I think the galaxy yeah. need to put games away early. Basically the only game they didn't score first in was the Nashville game. Uh, you can look at trying to go on the road and getting an early goal. And what we've seen from the LA galaxy is they seem to be able to come out of a game on fire, which is they're very hot. They're confusing. They're confusing teams right off the bat. They get 15, 20, 30 minutes of we're going to absolutely dominate you and then the chances haven't fallen yeah. things haven't gone their way and there's like a little bit of a letdown and so for me it's if you want this LA Galaxy team to go steal points against Sporting Kansas City light them up in the first 20 minutes right two yeah. three goals in the first 20 minutes we're just like oh we should you should just do that every time <laughs> yes I realize but um <laughs> but go back and watch the games that the Galaxy have played and for the most That's... part they've had those chances in the early part of the game so Put them away early. Make them think there's no way they can win this game after the first 30, 45 minutes. That's what they did against San Jose, which was really, yes. hey, it's 2 nothing. We come back after halftime. 3 nothing. Thank you. Game over. It doesn't matter what you do. You can have a consolation goal. That doesn't matter anymore. We're going to rest our guys. We're going to do all this stuff. It doesn't matter anymore. Why don't you talk about uh, D ratings and the and the rankings we have, well, all right? Be before we go yes. on that, I know you, you, you want to get out of here because you got other things to take care of. But with... Um, <laughs> he's... he's He's watching me right now. Fair enough. Yes. With with the game plan being to put away those chances early and why I'm I'm not afraid of the snooze fest this time around is because you look at that game against Nashville, you look at that game against St. Louis, the opportunities were there. They could have had three goals, four goals, right. and the game's out of reach and it's done. That's what happened at San Jose. And the opportunity was there for Miami. The opportunity was there for Nashville. The opportunity was there for St. Louis. So the opportunities, I think, are going to be there, and it's just a matter of putting them away. But if you look at D ratings, uh, they don't believe in the Galaxy as much. They seem to value uh, the Sporting Kansas City home field advantage they have. If you look at the percentages, for those of us watching on YouTube, it's a 51% Hulk, chance. That, that, that's wrong. I just want you to, okay. I, I apparently grabbed the wrong one whenever I trimmed it today. I'll, I'll oh, see no. if I can find find it. Remember, we saw it, and I just want to Is know, it not 51%? Uh, no, it is. You were correct. <laughs> I'm just saying the graphic that I showed was incorrect. Oh, got it. So here, let's, well, try, let's try this one. There we go. There we let's go. go. Okay, perfect. That's the one. So <laughs> Sporting Kansas City with a 51% chance to win. The Galaxy with only a 25% uh, 0.2% chance to win and then a draw at 23.9. But if you look at the XG, the LA galaxy, they have them projected at 1.13. That would be like the lowest XG the galaxy have had all year. So that's not, <laughs> that, no, I don't believe that's that. a, a day on sitter and a penalty. And right? we're there, right? But uh sporting Kansas city to have them at 1.72. So when you look at the XG, it's basically a one, one draw. So it's interesting to me that they have such a high percentage uh, for sporting Kansas city. If you look at the money line, uh, this is where it gets really interesting because the money line seems to be right in line with why D rating seems to be putting them so high. The LA Galaxy, I'm showing them at plus 265. So again, if you take, are really enjoying the LA Galaxy, money. I'll say it money. again, not a financial advisor. Right. But if you like the, the way the Galaxy is playing, plus 265 is pretty tasty. Sporting Kansas City, they have a minus uh, 115. And then the draw, if you think it's going to be a snooze fest, plus 315. That's your biggest winnings. If you think there's going to be a draw 
I put that plus 315. Impossible. Uh, Impossible. No draw this time. It can't be four in a row. This <laughs> so would be the times. fourth draw in a row for these two teams. I just don't believe it. I'm, I'm well, not uh, going to be a believer. We're, we're going to build. Vanny hasn't done three wins in a row, but he's going to start by doing four I, draws. I, I believe and then he's going to go to three wins. Oh, okay. And then we're going to have the seven game losing streak. Okay, cool. Um, I think Alex <laughs> Ruiz was telling me whenever we were talking that, that, that Vanny hasn't beaten Vermees yet. And I'm just wait. You know, it's one of those three wins in a row. Vanny can't beat Vermees. Let's it's, it's our roulette thing. It's, it's got to come red eventually. <laughs> right? Black, 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 red, red, red. It's coming. <laughs> right. You look on the board. You know it. 50, 50 chance. Nah, that's not it. Not every time. So anyway, that's what we got. That's what we'll set up uh, the whole deal. Let's get your prediction. Then, Eric, your predictions guaranteed to be wrong for this L.A. Galaxy and Sporting Kansas City game coming up at 530 p.m. on MLS season pass on Saturday. What do you got? Well, I, I know I said that they put in some snoozers with SKC, but not this season. This season, I think the Galaxy gets some goals. So guaranteed to be wrong score. I have them getting a draw, but I'm going to call it a 2-2 draw. I think we see a lot of goals. You see, we're going to see Paint Sill get on the board again. And I think you're going to see Peck uh, get a goal as well. So I'm, gonna, I'm even going to call my goal scorers. But I say it's a 2-2 draw. I think the defensive mistakes are still something that makes me a little bit worried, especially with right. Caceres out. You have, you're going to have a new center back pairing regardless so that makes me nervous i think the galaxy are going to ship at least one or two goals all right my son just came in to tell me that he thinks the galaxy are going to win three one smart man um, i like i like that he also wants me to find him his fitzy and boo boo before he goes to bed and so i'm oh, going to be oh. on that so hey me too brother me yeah, too i know exactly all right hey everybody i appreciate <laughs> you hanging in there with us today uh, a little crazy day but i figured we'd still want to do a show you didn't want me to cancel the show right so no, uh, you're the man josh so, well done so we could we could do one while we pay attention to the little guy too um so we'll uh, we'll do that the galaxy playing sporting kansas city coming up on saturday march 16th uh the L oh see no that's the old one see i, I this is it's too much today kansas city uh, coming up on March 23rd. Uh, there it is. Uh, the game. You know the story. You're listening three. to the podcast. You know how it works. 103. Well, yeah, like I need to tell anybody uh, how it goes. Somebody did say uh, getting, uh, this is one reason to listen to COG, getting season ticket member updates when you're a season ticket member. Like they didn't see the, <laughs> they didn't get the email, that type of thing. So um, just stuff we're trying to, I actually asked the Galaxy to put me on the STM list because I figured a bunch of our guys are season ticket members and that like it would be a good thing for us to talk. So we'll see if we do that as well. But the Galaxy coming up, playing against Sporting Kansas City coming up on Saturday, again, 5.30 p.m. MLS season pass. We imagine kickoff 5.40. They've all been 10-minute lead-ins, so um, that's what we're going with. All right, anything else, Eric? You good? That's it. Go get that Fitzy and that boo-boo and, yeah. and, and get it going. Shout out to you, Josh, for making all the all it happen with all the buttons and everything and the child running in. So my, salute to you, my friend. My wife literally goes, you're, you're not going to actually, you're not actually going to do a podcast. And I'm like, yeah, it'll be fine. He'll be in sleep. It won't be a thing. Right. So um, anyway, that's where, where it's at. Um, somebody asked me from a prediction. I say three, one, I agree with my son three, one. So I'm going, Perfect. I'm going with that. So um, let's see, Eric, tell people where they can find you and we will right. we'll go. All right. As always, you can find me on everything at Hammer EV9. That's Twitter, X, Instagram, TikTok, threads, all the fun things that at Hammer EV and the number nine. All right. If you're looking for me on X, Twitter, it's at Jay Gessman at Galaxy Podcast, corner of the galaxy.com. You can find us all those fun things, some fun things coming up for the near future. We'll get you locked and loaded for that. Another show coming up on a Monday with Kevin Baxter. We'll recap this game. So a lot of fun stuff there as well. The LA Galaxy looking to get that win. Need another win. Need three points. Headed to Sporting Kansas City where they don't usually win. Win. We'll see if they can pull it off. Uh, for Mr. Eric, the Portuguese Hammer Beer, I'm Josh Pato Guessman. You've been listening to our little Corner of the Galaxy. Have a great one, everybody. You've been listening to the Corner of the Galaxy podcast on cornerofthegalaxy.com. You can follow the show on Twitter and Instagram at Galaxy Podcast. And be sure to check out and subscribe to iTunes, Stitcher, and Facebook by searching for Corner of the Galaxy. Fans, we thank you for listening. We ask that you be kind and courteous to your neighbors as you leave the podcast. We thank you for joining us and look forward to seeing you again. Until then, I'm Michael Araujo, and on behalf of the entire Corner of the Galaxy crew, goodbye. Everybody.